OCN, Word of God to the World. God bless each and every one of you. And we are here at iReach. And today is going to be such a special day of anointing teaching and prayer requests. So if you have a prayer request today, I can talk directly to you. Would you please call 323-596-4955. The Holy Spirit is here so powerful. So call in and I will pray with you. This is such a tremendous, tremendous station. And right now, before I get into the teaching, because the anointing falls so heavy, this cable is called OCN, and it's for Open Door Communication Network. And you can Google it if you want or email it. It's um, www.ocn, B-R-O-A-D, broad, for broad. And it's on the screen, so you can just see it on the screen. If you forget the number, call in. And that's where you send your tithes. Believe me, brothers and sisters, television is where you should invest your tithes because it's a ministry that goes all over the world. And it's something that people who don't know Jesus or cannot get out, that they will be greatly ministered to. And so today, we're going to continue with the teaching on the Holy Spirit of God. Um, so what we're teaching right now is how to yield to the Holy Spirit. Who is the person of the Holy Spirit? We have shared that before, but you know what? We're going to share it again. And I want to tell you something. While you're listening to this teaching, the Holy Spirit of God will fall upon you and you will receive a healing or whatever you need because this is what it's all about. The devil says he has the airways, but he does not have the airways. We have the airways for the Holy Spirit of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? God bless you. Today I want to um, just renew a little bit of the things that we taught on before. Um, God the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. We know that. And he is the creative and the energizing force of the Godhood. Of the godhood. Um, we just came in from Chicago. And there were tremendous miracles in South Chicago with very precious people. But I want to tell you, when someone prays for you for a healing, that you will feel great heat. And that is the energizing power of the Holy Spirit. That heat is energy. It's the energy of God. God, the Holy Spirit, is healing that. So therefore, that area, whatever it is, your head, your ankles, your stomach, and you place your hand at that part while I'm calling it out and you will feel heat in your body. Jesus laid aside his divinity for a season. This does not mean that he didn't walk in the power of God. He walked in the power of God, the Holy Spirit, because if he would have walked in his divinity, the whole earth would have shook as he walked. So the scriptures tell us he laid it aside for a season. Um, even though he was fully God and fully man, to walk solely in the power of the Holy Ghost, and I believe he did that, brothers and sisters, to teach us how to yield to the Holy Spirit. And how does the Holy Spirit work in us? I want to tell you, these are the last days. Know what I'm saying. These are the last days. And Jesus could come right now. Right now, we could go up in this television studio. But the Lord is coming soon. So the Holy Spirit wants to tell you, get rid of the darkness in your life. Any dark sins that you have, any dark habits, dark friends, get rid of them because the time is short. Because darkness and the light cannot be together. So you cannot be raptured. You can't be with the Lord. He cannot get you and take you into heaven in the rapture if you have darkness within you. Because the Holy Spirit of God, the truth of the Holy Spirit of God is pure light. And there can't be darkness. So get rid of, this is a warning of the Holy Spirit, get rid of all the darkness in your life. You know, Jesus knows everything about you anyway. So you really do not have hidden sins. He knows what they are. Confess those sins to him and ask for the grace of the Holy Spirit to get, to get rid of these sins that you think are, are not important. But you know what? There's darkness within you and they are important. For instance, if you're a gossiper, you say, Holy Spirit of God, Please heal me of this gossip. Deliver me from a gossiping tongue, etc., etc., whatever your need is. Um, Jesus is so precious, brothers and sisters. In Acts 10, 38, it proves 
right here in scriptures in the book of Acts, that Jesus laid his side, laid aside his divinity. Because listen to what Luke says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He anointed him. So the Holy Spirit was the power that Jesus Christ moved over, pardon me, moved under. So as we read our, our gospel and we know all the precious work that God the Holy Spirit did, the Lord is expecting you and I in these end times to be Jesus to the world, and that means by walking in the realm of the supernatural, not the natural man. Remember when um, Peter walked on the water? He was walking in the supernatural realm and the faith, but as soon as he got in the flesh and looked at the waves around him, he started to sink. He would have gone all the way to re meet Jesus on that water, but he started to get carnal, and fear I'm sure fear crept in. And when that happened, he lost the ability to continue walking in the supernatural realm. How Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost and with power, went about doing good and healing all of those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If there's anybody today that has oppression, uh, it's a, a very strong spirit. And you can get rid of that depression when we pray for you at the end of this, uh, at this broadcast. Jesus' ministry was redemption. We all know that. He was born to die for us. Uh, the Holy Ghost's uh, ministry is to empower, empower us to be Jesus to the world. Actually, he's counting on you and I to be Jesus to the world. So we are empowered with the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's just so powerful. When you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, you already have the Holy Spirit because you cannot um, put aside, divin in other words, you can't separate the Trinity. So you did have the Holy Spirit in your heart when you received Jesus in your heart. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is allowing the Holy Spirit full reign for you to walk as Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, doing good, healing people, and uh, working miracles. The gift of miracles is for everyone that's listening if they yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. In uh, John 14, 16, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also. And greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. He was telling the apostles, I have to go to my Father. But you know what? You're going to walk as I walked. Because he says in one scripture, and I'm going to repeat it again, the Holy Spirit has been with you, but he shall be in you. When was he with the apostles? When Jesus uh, performed every single miracle, the Holy Spirit was with him. But he wanted the power of the Holy Spirit of God to dwell in each one of us and for you and I to walk in the power of the supernatural realm. In John 14, 12, the Lord says, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works that I shall do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Do we mean more powerful gifts, more powerful miracles? Absolutely not. What Jesus means here is that there are, there are so many of us, there's so many of us Christians, and therefore there are greater works than what Jesus was performing because he was the only one performing miracles at the time he was on the earth. But after the, but after the resurrection and the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down, uh, came down upon the apostles and that's where their fear left them, everything left them when they, when they got filled with the Holy Spirit of God. In John 14, 16, and I will pray to the Father and he shall send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Uh, once you have the Holy Spirit, he abides with you forever. What does he mean, I will send the comforter? Does he mean, oh, poor you, I'll rock you to sleep? Come here, let me pat on your back. Absolutely not. When he says, I will send you the comforter, he is saying, I will send you the empowerment. The empowerment. I will supply the power for you. And that's what Jesus does when we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We when we receive Jesus in our heart, we're still, we are still walking somewhat in the carnal realm. But when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, that's when you're empowered to go forth as Jesus went forth. The comforter is the enabler. He enables you with his power. Isn't that wonderful? John 14, 17 says, 
even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot have that spirit of truth, that empowering of the Holy Spirit that you can have because you're a Christian. Because he seeth him not, neither he knows him, but you shall know him, for he, he has dwelt with you and he shall be in you. This is what Jesus is saying. Because you don't see him, take it by faith. Neither knoweth him, which is the, the Holy Spirit of God, nor do you know him, for he dwelleth with you. He was with the apostles when Jesus walked, uh, walked in the miracle anointing. And he shall be in you. Imagine God in us in such a powerful way. And John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and I, I read that before, I shall send him to you, the enabler. And then John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. Whoa. Did you think when you said that sinner's prayer that you chose God? No. His hand was on you by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit drew you to that moment that you were to accept Jesus Christ. He says, and I, ordain, I chose you and I ordained you. We are ordained by God that you may go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you in the name of Jesus. That's so powerful. I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go, go. This is the message of the Holy Spirit. Go forth. Do not be afraid. Yield to the power of my spirit, and you shall walk as Jesus walked. And uh, John 16, 13, how be it when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You do not have to have your hand read. You don't have to go to a fortune teller. You don't have to read tarot cards to know your future. Because if you ask the Holy Spirit of God, he will let you know. He will give you direction. He says, and I will tell you of things to come. That is so powerful. And he said um, that whatsoever he shall hear. In other words, when you speak in tongues and then tongues is interpreted or the gift of prophecy is spoken forth through a man or woman of God, this means that he's filled with the Holy Spirit and he gives us wisdom. And that voice that we hear when we're moving forth in the prophetic word is a message to you. John 16, 14, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and he will show it unto you. You are going to, be, you're, you are going to possess God's glory that if the light would shine on all of those that are walking upright before God without any darkness within him, we would light up the whole world. What Jesus said in Matthew, you are the light of the world. Do you know what he meant? He meant that we are as the sun, brighter than the sun, brighter than the moon. And that brightness is the glory of God. And whenever anybody speaks in tongues or prophesies, he is speaking forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. This doesn't mean that Jesus is left out because you're speaking in the power of his spirit. Many people don't understand that. So many people say, well, you can't speak in tongues. You can't give a prophetic word. But you can through the power of the Holy Spirit of God to, because we're to walk as Jesus walked. This is such an exciting walk, brothers and sisters. And I pray that as you are there, my beloved ones, that you hunger for the Holy Spirit. Cry out for him. Cry out for him. If you do that, he will come to you and you will know it. You will be on such a high that you cannot explain it. Um, if we were to be Jesus to the world, we must have God the Holy Spirit released in power in our life because that's the only way you can have um, the power of the Holy see the power of the Holy Spirit, have miracles, healings, the prophetic word, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. John 3.30, he must increase. The Holy Spirit must increase within you, but I must decrease. What are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? We must put aside our own pride and judgment. That is so strong. And be obedient to God by preaching the word, obedience to God, and saving others through serving others, excuse me, by manual labor and giving love and comfort. You know, when you're Jesus to the world, you, your eyes are different. 
Your eyes is, are as Jesus saw. You know, if you saw someone with AIDS, you would say, ooh, that person has AIDS. I don't want to get near that person. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you with confidence go and lay hands on that, peop on that person because you're moving in the supernatural realm. 1 Corinthians 1, 12, 1. Now concerning the spiritual gifts we have. And I'm going to stop here because I want to, you to hear the beautiful song that Pat is going to sing. It is so beautiful. And she's playing her own guitar. Listen to the, what the words say. How can you invite the Holy Spirit in? How can you, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, how can you move forth? You have to know who you are in Christ. That is so very important. How do I walk in the supernatural realm? Because I know who I am. God bless you. Listen to this song. what the Lord is doing in your home today. But I want to again ask you to please support OCN. It's a mighty, mighty ministry of God. And if the, the number to call and the number of to send your, and the uh, email, excuse me, to send your gifts is this. I'm going to say it again. www.ocnb, as in boy, R-O-A-D. Please send in your, your um, alms. You know what? When you send alms to this broadcast, let me tell you, God's going to multiply your money. 
Don't be afraid to give because you'll go to your mailbox and you will find money. I gave $100 in Chicago to a very poor parish because we minister in South Chicago where it's all burned and there's all African-American people that are so poor. And I could not afford that $100, but I was obedient to the Lord, and I gave that $100. Do you know what I got back? I got back $1,500 for that one $100. That's how good God is. So test him. He says, test me. And so test him. Amen? Um, brothers and sisters, I just want to tell you to get ready for the Holy Spirit to fall upon you. And brothers and sisters, Jesus is healing you right now. He's healing you right now. Beloved ones, just let the Holy Spirit touch you. Can we play it louder, please? Let the Holy Spirit touch you. Right now, God is healing fear. God is healing your fear right now. He's healing it. Put your hand on your head, and I rebuke the spirit of fear in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke it. I rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. There's so many of you watching that want to be used of God. Put your hands on yourself. I'm going to call out mantles today. What is a mantle? It's your ministry. Receive those mantles today by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. He's giving mantles to minister to the poor, street ministry. There's a young man that's watching, and God is giving you the mantle of preaching, young man. Don't be afraid. Because as you preach the word, then signs and wonders follow. That's in the word of God. We preach the word, and then signs and wonders follow you. There's someone that the Lord is speaking to right now that's um, giving you the ministry of consolation. Consolation, consoling people through the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of God is coming forth upon your life. All of those that are listening today. The Lord is doing so many powerful things today. He's given you the gift of the prophetic world. Word, praise God. The word of knowledge. The Lord, you call out what God is doing as I am doing right now. I am operating in the word of knowledge. God the Holy Spirit is speaking to me through my ears and my heart, and I am speaking what he tells me to say. So receive your miracles. The Lord is healing somebody with an infirmed heart. Your heart beats so rapidly, and it's so painful. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I claim that healing for that person. I declare and, and I decree that you will be totally set whole. Right now, the Holy Spirit is moving through your blood, blood of people who are watching it, through sugar diabetes, praise God, um, uh, sugar, sugar, di uh, what is that, you know, sugar diabetes, he's healing right now, sugar diabetes, if you're healing, feeling the power of the Holy Spirit of God, call us so we can pray for you, beloved ones, the Holy Spirit is here, the ho Lord is healing lupus, lupus that's in the blood in the name of jesus christ i bind that spirit of lupus and that one watching in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah also the lord is touching lungs today oh my god thank you jesus put your hands on your chest where your lungs are and in the name of jesus christ i command those lungs to open breathe in jesus and breathe out infirmity the spirit of infirmity Breathe in Jesus and breathe out the spirit of infirmity. You're feeling heat in your lungs and you're feeling your lungs open up in Jesus' mighty name. There's so many people out there that have confusion. What am I to do at this time? What can I do? Am I worthy to move forth in the power of the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes, you are. Not in your flesh, but the spiritual man within you is worthy to walk forth in the power of the Holy Spirit, to receive God, the Holy Spirit, and then walk in his gifts. Praise God. The Lord is healing cancer, my beloved. Cancer, thank you, Jesus. Cancer in the lymph nodes. Oh, it's so powerful. The Lord is healing cancer today. Breast cancer is to go in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is somebody that are in their last pennies. I tell you, whatever you have left, give it to God and he will increase it a thousandfold. Not a hundred, but a thousandfold. Test Jesus and see, and see that he is good. Oh, my beloved ones, the Lord is healing sores inside your mouth, cancer in the mouth, cancer in the tongues, 
somebody has canker sores on their lips in the name of Jesus I rebuke those diseases in Jesus mighty name hallelujah just breathe in cancer breathe out cancer of the lungs breathe in Jesus breathe out that cancer breathe in Jesus and breathe out that cancer hallelujah hallelujah there's some of you beloved brothers and sisters that have such fear fear of Isaac fear of them coming after us here in the United States but you know what the Lord says in John I did not pardon me in Timothy I did not give you the spirit of fear that means that fear is a spirit I did not give you the spirit of fear but what I gave you was my love my power and a sound mind when you fear the devil takes over your mind you can't think properly it's not sound it's not sound and I just advise you to please open the Bible, the Word of God. And right now, there's so many of you that want to walk in the power of the Spirit. Put your hands towards the TV, television set. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce the Holy Spirit. I loose the Holy Spirit on your life. I loose the Holy Spirit on your life. I loose the Holy Spirit on your life. Some of you are getting slain right now because the power is so strong. Hallelujah. But maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. <laughs> maybe you don't have the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit within you. When you receive Jesus, you receive the whole Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I give my life to you. I receive the power of your most holy, precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. Yes, I believe you rose from the dead. Give me a hunger of your word, Lord. Give me a hunger for sacred scripture. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Jesus, that today you have chosen me to be in the family of God. Congratulations to all of you that said that prayer. Now you are in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. The Lord is moved. Oh, there's families that have been separated. We're coming to the holiday season, and it's so painful for you and your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that that sorrow, that oppression is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that families will be reunited. I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Get your hands off every Christian family now. I come against you in Jesus' mighty name, and I loose the Holy Spirit, and I loose the angels in those households. God bless you, precious ones. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Do you know how precious you are? That's why Pat sang that song, Know Who You Are. You're so precious to Jesus, and you, male or female, are his bride. God bless you, and I'm setting the power of God into your home as we close this, me this message. Just cry out for the Holy Spirit. God bless you. OCN, Word of God to the World.